All right, we're back on the Model T. I'm starting to get excited about this project again. We've got some motivation back, so that's always good. Some of the parts have come in for this project. Here's the new copper head gasket right there. We have our new valves right there. I'll show you those in a couple minutes. And I also got new springs, uh, valve pin keepers and spring retainers. And I've got a new ball hone for the cylinders. I also have a new set of cylinder head bolts, a new set of oil pan inspection cover bolts. And we have the oil pan inspection cover gasket. They accidentally gave me two of them, but that's fine. I'll put it in my collection for another project. And then we have new valve cover gaskets as well. Here are the new valves. And I just went with stock size valves and stock size valve stems. First, I want to see if these valve seats are going to clean up easily. Um, I would like to be able to just clean them up and then lap them in without having to uh, resurface them. So I've got the number two cylinder valves uh, isolated and I'm gonna try a brass brush first, see how far this gets us and we'll go from there. I'm making some progress, but this carbon around the exhaust valve, especially and in between, that's it's really thick. And uh, that's just not gonna come off with some light scrubbing. So if you guys have watched the channel for a while, you've seen me use these little bits from time to time. They're like a fibrous bit in, you know, in a Dremel. All right, here they are after a little bit of uh, work with that bit. This here is the intake valve seat. And that surface right there is where the valve makes contact with the seat. This one actually looks pretty decent. Um, I think we'll be able to get away with it just lapping this one in and uh, I don't think we're gonna have to resurface it at all. All right, here's the exhaust valve. This one's a little bit more dinged up than the intake, but it's really not that bad, especially for a low compression engine, it really isn't that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rest of the entire surface of the block. Um, that's probably going to take me at least an hour, if not more like two hours. So I won't make you watch me do that. I'll just bring you back when I've got it all clean. Then we can evaluate the other valve seats and uh, decide then if we're going to have to resurface them or if we can just get away with lapping them. So I don't think the head has been off of this engine for a very long time. I keep mentioning that these engines are low compression, which they are. So this kind of carbon buildup is quite common for these engines after years and years. It's just uh, kind of an unavoidable thing that needs to be addressed once in a while. And that's where we are today. All right, you can see I've got about half of it done. And yeah, I ran out of those little bits, so I uh, have to get some more tomorrow and finish the rest. All right, here's the valve seats on cylinder number one. That's the intake that looks about like the other one, looks all right. Here's the exhaust. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to get away with just lapping these. I don't think we're gonna have to resurface them, which is nice. So because we're kind of stuck here right now, I think I'll go ahead and um, chase the threads on all the head bolt holes. And I just wanna see how deep they are. So I have a general idea. Not very deep, whatever that is, maybe an inch. And the threads in these holes are 7, 16, 14. See how the valves look. All right, looks like we got the right size and we have a good fit. All right, this is piston and rod number one. 
and you can see a number one right there that number one goes towards the right side of the engine when they get installed and that's the same way the dipper faces too these particular pistons they're aftermarket aluminum pistons and you can see they have a slot on this side but not on that side so these pistons are actually directional and the slot faces to the left side of the engine when you put them in so knowing that we can safely uh, remove the piston from the rod before i tap out the wrist pin we need to remove or loosen that bolt right there it looks like maybe a 9 16 let's see and there's also a retaining wire in there it looks like it goes through the head of the bolt and then around the rod and back through the bolt yeah and then on this side it's twisted All right, there's our old mechanics wire. All right, there's the uh, bolt. Fine thread, Henry Ford loved to use fine thread stuff. Now I think we can get the uh, wrist pin knocked out. All right, there we go. Yeah, inside of the rod looks okay. We do have a relief cut in there for the uh, bolt when it goes through the rod. So that's gonna have to be realigned when I install it. And the wrist pin itself looks to be in pretty good condition. I'm gonna do these one at a time in the ultrasonic cleaner just to make sure that I don't get the parts mixed up. I want these to go back on the same rods in which they came off so they go back into the same cylinders yes i could mark them so i know which ones they are but i'm not in a rush here so we're just going to do this one at a time i've already got the ultrasonic cleaner heating up 38 is the target temperature 25 is where it is right now and of course that is celsius so I'll put the piston in and the wrist pin and the bolt and we'll let that cook for 50 minutes. While number one is cooking, we can get number two disassembled. And on the oil ring on these pistons, they have a little um, spring type deal underneath the rings themselves there it is the new ones don't have that for whatever reason just a different design i guess all right here's piston number one out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner sure does a good job it's a perfect tool for something like this to get down into the grooves and on the interior of the thing all right, here's the number three piston. This was our problem cylinder for whatever reason that was. And all this carbon is not gonna come off in the ultrasonic cleaner, so we're gonna remove this first. All right, that's a little bit better, huh? Got all that carbon off there, and just a, for whatever reason, this piston got stamped twice. 0 0.030 there, and another 0 0.030 there. And somebody scribed a little arrow on the top right there, pointing towards the side of the piston, probably to keep track of which way it was uh, inside the engine before they took it apart, whenever that was. Anyway, no sense watching me finish cleaning these all up, so I'll get this all done off camera, then we'll bring you back. Well, it's been about five days since the last clip. I've been doing some stuff off camera and I've hit a couple of roadblocks here. Let me show you what is going on. Uh, the first thing, which is not a big deal, but these four bolts are the bolts that went through the wrist pin clamps at the end of the connecting rods. And you can see they are in terrible condition. You can see how far that one is worn down. That one actually broke in half. These two are worn as well. 
it's not a huge deal um, but these are special bolts so it'll take a week for me to uh, order some new ones in the mail because I can't go down to the local hardware store and pick up uh, bolts like this but the biggest problem I ran into I did not expect this at all but when I was taking the pistons off the connecting rods and you know was tapping the wrist pins out they were pretty hard to come out but I didn't think a lot about it at the time because everything was so uh, gummed up and dirty. I get all the pistons out of the parts cleaner. This is number three and number four. And then I go to check the fit of the wrist pins into the clean pistons and they they really don't fit at all. I can get that one in about that far and I can't push it any farther than that. I'd have to start hammering it. Yeah, I'm not even, okay, I did get it out that time, but uh, it's the same on both sides and it's the same with all four pistons. So I showed you that number four piston before, how it was kind of st stuck in position and it didn't rotate freely. Well, again, I just thought everything was dirty. And I think what is going on here is these holes for the wrist pins have become egg-shaped. So if I hold the piston sideways like that, and we draw a vertical line and a horizontal line, the measurement of the hole along that vertical line is about 10 thousandths larger than the measurement of the hole along the horizontal line. And it's pretty much the same on the other side. And it's pretty much the same on this other piston. The hole is egg shaped this way a little bit. So these are aluminum pistons and these wrist pins are, you know, some kind of a high carbon steel wrist pins are perfectly round i checked them when so when you try to put a round thing in a egg-shaped hole you know then that's where you have the problem see i can't even get it in as far as i did last time so that's a problem like i said before i don't happen to have replacement bolts for these wrist pin clamps but i looked at my stuff and i have a complete set of pistons that are exactly the same make and model as these other ones, and they're also 30 over. I mean, what are the chances of that? I'm not saying I'm gonna use these, I'm just, it was kind of a coincidence just to find them in my parts and have them be exactly the same. But I wanna show you how the wrist pins fit in these. You know, that's how a wrist pin should fit, so the piston can spin easily on the, on the pin. And these are dirty. These aren't even clean like these ones are. Because this is a low budget project, I'm tempted to clean these up and run these. Um, I haven't inspected them really closely. These are, yeah, see, that one's got some scoring there and some evidence of overheating. Yeah, I think I'm talking myself out of this already. This one's got a little bit of scoring, but it's not terrible. But this one is the worst. This one had, yeah, this one really had some pretty significant scoring going on right there. So something has happened to these pistons over the years that has deformed their shape just a little bit. So I just got back from measuring the cylinders in the engine block just by using a ring. You know, you put it in the top of the cylinder and measure the ring gap and then push it down towards the middle, measure the ring gap, push it down towards the bottom. And the cylinders still look good. There's no change to the diameter of the cylinders. That is, they haven't become uh, cone-shaped or anything like that. So that is really good news. So like I said, I'm somewhat tempted to use at least three of these pistons and find the best one out of the four of these. But even I know that's not a good idea. You don't want to be matching different used pistons uh, in different cylinders. So I think the only path to success that I can see is um, buying a new set of pistons. I already looked them up. These aren't terribly expensive. You can get a new set of four for 95 bucks and they come with wrist pins that are precision fit. So I think that is the best solution. I'm gonna run that ball home through the cylinders anyway so we'll have a new set of pistons with brand new wrist pins that fit perfectly. And I've even got a new set of rings to fit these pistons. Uh, Hastings brand should be good quality. 
So this project took kind of a hard uh, left turn there on me, but that, you know, that happens sometimes. You can't predict these things. So unfortunately that's gonna add another 100 bucks and probably a week and a half to the project. But I think this way we still have a path to success. So I think I'll go inside where it's a little bit warmer, get this video edited for you guys, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for joining me as always, and uh, we will look forward to getting this project back on the rails in a couple of weeks. Take care everybody.